Hello and welcome to another standard video here in the brand new Bloomborough meta. Today we're taking a look at a controlling red-white tokens deck that's trying to leverage Caretaker's talent as its card draw engine. This 3-mana class enchantment was voted on by my supporters on Patreon. It says whenever one or more tokens we control enter, we get to draw a card, only triggers once each turn. So this does also trigger off treasure tokens and food tokens for instance, although in this deck we're mainly going to be using creature tokens. And then we can also potentially draw two cards per turn side cycle if we figure out a way to create tokens at instant speed during the opponent's turn, which this deck is also capable of. Then at level 2 for just one additional mana we get to create a copy of a token we already control, and then at level 3 we can give our creature tokens plus 2 plus 2 to help close out the game. Now the problem with Caretaker's Talent is that it's a pretty slow card that usually doesn't impact the board the turn you play it, and especially in the best of one meta that's filled with red aggro decks, you can expect to survive after tapping out for a talent on turn 3. So instead we want to be playing this in a more controlling deck that can keep the board clear, so by the time we can deploy the Caretaker's Talent we're not under too much pressure and actually stay alive long enough to deploy all those extra cards. And that's why I want to include Temporary Lockdown alongside it, which is a way to exile all non-land permanents with mana value 2 or less until lockdown leaves the battlefield, so a great answer against all the aggro decks in the format, presenting lots of 1 and 2 mana creatures, especially ones that also trigger when they die, because by exiling them they won't trigger. And then by playing the lockdown of course we can't include too many of our own token makers that cost 1 and 2 mana or that leave a lot of tokens on the battlefield because they'll just get swept up by our own temporary lockdown. So instead we're relying on Urbrask's Forge which is a 3 mana artifact so it dodges our own lockdown and this will every turn increase the power of the Phyrexian Horror token we generate. It has haste, can immediately attack and then end of turn gets sacrificed. So every turn if we have both Forge and Talent in play we get to draw an extra card the token will keep getting bigger and bigger. At some point we can also level up our caretaker's talent in our second main phase after attacking with our Phyrexian token, and then the copy actually gets to stay on the battlefield, whereas the original gets sacrificed, so that can leave us with a nice 4 or 5 powered token that can then attack on the following turn, potentially after leveling up our talents to level 3, so that's another very neat interaction. And then we have a bunch more sweepers to keep the board clear besides temporary lockdown. We also have the full set of Sunfall, which will leave behind a large incubator token most of the time. Can also increase the size of it if we exile our own Phyrexian token from the Urabrask's Forge. And it will also trigger our Caretaker's Talent in case we uh, don't have another token that turn. We can still trigger it with the incubator, so that also has excellent synergy. And then I'm also playing three copies of Beza, the Bounding Spring, which is a great way to catch back up if you're behind, especially against aggro, as we get to make a 4-5 creature that gains 4 life if our opponent had more life than us, we get to create a treasure if our opponent had more lands than us, and we get to create a pair of fish tokens if our opponent had more creatures than us after Beza enters. So we're pretty likely to at least gain 4 life against Monorad, often also making a pair of fish tokens, so that can also buy us time to eventually set up a sweeper, and if we cast a Sunfall after after playing Beza, the incubator is going to be even bigger. So that's kind of our game plan against aggro, and then we can also complement it with more spot removal initially. Elspeth's Smite can be a way of exiling opposing creatures, so once again very useful against Hardfire Hero and Cacophony Scamp, which can otherwise deal damage on the way out. And then we've got a Lightning Helix, which can also gain us additional life back, and Get Lost, a versatile answer, can also hit Enchantments and Planeswalkers, so it can also be useful against the new Golgari Innkeeper's Talent decks and then a temporary lockdown also an answer to the talent. At 4 mana I'm also playing two copies of Archangel Elspeth, can make life linking tokens, great against aggro and another way to repeatedly trigger our caretaker's talent. And then I also have a one-off Season of the Burrow, another flexible answer that can also make lots of rabbit tokens or maybe get back our talent or forge from the graveyard as well. And then the mana base has some useful tools as well. Four copies of Mirex and two copies of Fountain Port are ways to generate tokens at instant speed. So that's one way to maybe generate tokens during the opponent's turn to draw two cards of our Caretaker's Talent, one in our turn, one during the opponent's turn. can also use Fountain Port in our second main phase to sacrifice a token and draw a card. So that's great after we attacked with our token from our forge. We can still sacrifice it to draw a card. 
And then we also have four copies of Sunken Citadel in the mana base and her stamped, so that's the drawback. Then we choose a color, can make one mana of that color or potentially two mana of that color to spend on activated abilities of land sources. So now we can use our Citadel to maybe pay for Fountain Port or Mirex, so it's going to be one cheaper to activate those and maybe still keep up other interaction or cast additional spells. And then we've got a one of Demolition Field, which can also benefit from our Sunken Citadel, especially useful at dealing with opposing creature lands against a Golgar mid-range deck for instance since the cottage can hit pretty hard and then we've got lots of red white dual lands parlor enter stamped but can also maybe surveil to set up our next couple draws forge is untapped but can cost a bit of life and then a four inspiring vantage which will be untapped early can be important for casting elspeth smites and lightning helix against aggro we also eventually need double white for temporary lockdown so the mana base does skew towards white with four planes and just one mountain to find with our demolition field and that also makes it easier to support smite on turn one as opposed to maybe a torch the tower which can be another way of exiling creatures cheaply. This one has the weird restriction of only targeting attacking or blocking creatures, but since we're a control deck that's usually not a problem. And uh, yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. We have a two lander, which is a little bit risky, but at least we've got good tools against aggro. So I'll give it a shot. Eventually Mirex can combo with a talent as well. Put on blue-black, so... Typically a more controlling color combination. Hopefully we can resolve the talent. Alright, Scholar can draw and discard. Could point towards some uh, graveyard synergies, but just discarding a cutdown. Yeah, I don't think we need to get lost uh, Scholar here. Resolve talent while we can. And then Smite could be a clean solution. Eidetic Memory can start growing their creatures. Could also destroy their enchantment with Get Lost. Currently they would only get one plus one counter. Still within range of a uh, Lightning Helix. Or Brask's Forge would be awesome to get in play with uh, Caretaker's Talents. If they counter it here I'll be pretty sad. So maybe it's better to pass and wait for the opponent to make a move, let them kind of waste their mana, try to deal with this caller. Putting some stops to maybe prevent memory from going off if we decide to use Get Lost. Currently they haven't drawn any additional cards. So I could set up Elspeth's Smite instead. That works. And shield roots next. Good target for get lost. Let them surveil first. And then we get to resolve Urbrask's Forge without being worried about a counter spell. So that worked out for the best. I think I still like Forge over Beza. Trigger, see if we maybe draw a tap land for turn. And then I don't feel inclined to copy a 1-1, one -one. can maybe wait to get a bigger token. So we've got a nice engine going, but we'll see what our opponent can come up with. They might be able to go over the top. Another shield route's a good start. Although we have another get lost. So we're just gonna get lost before taking our draw step for turn. Does mean we no longer have an answer to the eidetic memory. And then I can play another forge. Well, this uh, plan's working out nicely so far. If they present more big creatures, we can always Sunfall. Helix for the small stuff, and now another Get Lost for memory. Alright, Hidatsugu and Kairi. We'll uh, give them quite a few counters with memory. 
and they might be able to set up some powerful combos like maybe a breach the multiverse that they get to cast for free. So ideally we exile Hidatsugu with a Sunfall, but our opponent does have two mana available to maybe interfere. Maybe step one, go to attackers, draw off talent. And I'll get in. So we'll let damage happen. If I take 8 of Hidatsugu next turn, I'm still not dead at least. So I think we try Sunfall. It would be more mana efficient to play Beza and keep up Get Lost. Yeah, not sure how many counter spells the opponent is running. Possible they don't have any. Or maybe they'll destroy their own Hidatsugu just to get the trigger. And go for the throats. Alright, could not have really prevented that. So, let's see what they got. A malicious eclipse just wiping the board. That's not too bad. Okay. So we've got a zero counter incubator. Another memory just to get a redraw. And another scholar. So yeah, if that was their grand finale, I'm not too concerned. Opponent definitely gunning for those red aggro decks by playing the Eclipse. Another talent is excellent too. So let's see, do we want to play Beza? Right now it would draw me a card as well. And then I can still play talent afterwards. Or I guess we can start here. Am I worried about Scholar killing me? Maybe a little bit. But if we gain four, that's less likely. So yeah, let's start here. So we get a treasure, draw a card, and gain four life. And then draw another from talent. So... Yeah, let's go to attackers. I don't think I'm playing another talent this turn. First want to see if we can maybe finish off this caller with an Elspeth Smite. And then one trick that's sometimes important here when playing with Smite is to go full control and make sure we can put a stop in the end of combat step, which is after damage is dealt, but while creatures are still declared as attackers and blockers. This way I ensure that Scholar has three damage on it, and then I can smite it um, afterwards, so that if they had a cut down, they wouldn't be able to cut down the 3-1 and uh, prevent me from taking out Scholar. So, still in the end of combat step, so I can still smite Scholar as it's still technically a blocker. And that works. So now I feel better about tapping out for another caretaker's talent to have that ready for next turn against blue black i'm not concerned about any effects that would destroy all my artifacts and enchantments unless maybe a blast zone gets played but that would take a few turns to deploy and then next turn i'm looking forward to using caretaker's talent to copy the forge token in my second main phase Opponent just cycling through their deck. Yeah, it's a lot of card draw, spot removal, and sweepers. But that's not how you beat this engine. Probably good against mono red. Alright, so we have options. Maybe start with double helix on Scholar. Keep get lost for shieldreds. Although get lost on Scholar and then double helix going face is also likely to end things. And now go to attackers. And draw two off talent. Attack. Opponent's probably got another removal spell. 
takes eight. And then, yeah, I could um, just pass with some mana up, but I kind of want to make this play. Copy the 4-1. I could do this again if I had the white mana, which I don't. So maybe had I gone for get lost and then double helix face, we would have uh, closed out the game. But it does have a breach after all. Okay, maybe get one of my planeswalkers, found an Archangel Elspeth, and then Hidatsugu. Okay, maybe keep another breach on top. But I think we'll still get there. Alright, found a helix. So, what's the move? Can copy talents on the horror token. A little risky if they're keeping up removal, I suppose. Then they remove the token. But then I can just take out the soldier and trample over for the win. So, sure. The token does have haste. And draws two cards. And go to attackers. All going face. Also could have gone for talent up to level 3 to give tokens plus 2 plus 2. Just wanted to make sure I had enough mana for all my instants. And then we'll try and get lost on the lifelinker. And damage... And that does it. Awesome. So yeah, the last couple turns could have been sequenced a little differently, but overall the game plan just lined up well. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is a bunch of spot removal. No real game plan other than removing creatures. And then the mana is also not ideal with double Mirex. That's going to run out of colored mana for Lightning Helix at some point. So I think we can do better. This is a bit better. And then one card has to go. We are on the play, so maybe I can afford to get rid of Smite and keep Lockdown as our answer against Aggro. Smite is also usually better on the draw, as you can answer some hasty 2-drop for 1 mana. Put on the red-green. Maybe of the pump spell variety. Turn 1 Swiss Spear. So yeah, Smite still would have been decent here. Gotta hope our opponent commits more creatures to the board into the lockdown, otherwise I could maybe play Talent first. But if they just deal a ton of damage through pump spells, that's not gonna be best for me. Opponent's got the Slick Shots, also good against lockdown. So I'm just gonna play the Talents, hope they play the Slick Shots without killing me. And then we can try and stabilize. Beza can gain us some life back. Audacity also gets exiled by the lockdown. But the priority is answering the board. Okay. Still at 11. Opponent's got nothing, and uh, wouldn't be drawing any cards since we don't get to make any tokens with Beza, but uh, it might still be worth it here just to put a 4-5 in play and gain 4 life. Alternatively, I can activate Mirax to draw a card of Caretaker's Talents, and then maybe next turn play Beza, level up Talent to draw another card. Yeah, let's be patient. Might be a little greedy. But our opponent seems to be on maybe just some pump spells in hand. So step one, attack. Uh, 
A fun interaction with Get Lost is to hit your own things just to trigger Talon to make an extra token. So let's maybe try to level up. Opponent wants to take out my token in response now. So we have options. Could just activate Mirex and then copy that token. Yeah, that's probably fine. And then I'll still have Elspeth Smite available. Sunfall making an incubator also draws a card, but ideally we want to make a token in our turn and then once again in the opponent's using Mirex for instance, so we can draw two extra cards per turn cycle and our opponent feels like they're already too far behind. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and yeah, I've got a keeper. Citadel on white and then Mirex can still help cast Lockdown on three, otherwise we're looking at Urbrask's Forge. And get lost into lockdown is also a decent sequence as we can get rid of all the map tokens we just gave to our opponent. Kind of depends if we're up against a hyper aggro deck, otherwise I don't mind saving get lost for later. And then Citadel helps activate Mirex, so it's a little cheaper. Opponent red white with a warden, so maybe a Boros Convoke deck. Alright, so we'll let our opponent go off since we have the lockdown. Can maybe still smite the Warden if that attacks. But I also have to make sure I have double white for lockdown available. Yeah, I guess for now we'll smite. And then hope to draw another white source so I don't feel weird playing Orbrax's Forge. So yeah, now it's a little bit risky if I don't find another white source. I may be unable to cast a lockdown, but still gotta hit my land drop for a turn, so we'll get it going. And then with two sweepers, we've got good answers for the Convoke deck. In the meantime, we're applying pressure with Forge, which they probably can't interact with. So if I just draw two more lands, including a white source, we should be good to go. Putin does have the War Leader's Call, can still hit it with the Get Lost. For now, I'm still leaning Horobrask's Forge. Now, I guess one thing to watch out for is the uh, Recruiter giving creatures haste. So if they have a lot of mana, they can potentially deploy a couple creatures and then immediately give them haste to attack for a lethal in one go. So that's another reason to maybe deploy the Forge early. So we put them under pressure so they don't have time to get to as much mana to set up a lethal Recruiter out of nowhere. Of course, the War Leader's Call damaging us also synergizes with that game plan. So I'm going to get lost as soon as I can. Opponent just activating a Mirex. And by doing it main phase, they actually got one more damage in. Otherwise, they might have missed out on that. Did find my white source at long last, but uh, for now, we're just going to attack. And then I imagine get lost on War Leader's Calls the way to go. But I think I still wait, even though they could now once again respond with Mirex if I try and get lost to call. Since they might try to target their mites with the uh, Goblin Token Maker. And then I could get lost in response. Although honestly, could still just get lost to War Leader's Call at that point. Opponent attacks. Yeah, I mean, if their plays activate Mirex in response, make some goblins, we've got to lock down, so that's fine. Next turn, our opponent is facing 4, 7 damage. So I've got some options. I'll just take 2 for now. That right, opponent does have Recruiter making a pair of Knights. Now it seems fine to get rid of the War Leader's Call. And found another Get Lost, so before attacking, we can lock down. Get rid of everything. And then next turn we should be able to cross the finish line. Especially if we draw a land for Sunfall. 
And Sunfall is also great with Forge since we can cast its second main after making our tokens just to make the incubator even bigger. So there's a lot of hidden synergies. Some are a bit more obvious than others. But uh, yeah, Forge does set up some pretty cool interactions. Like we saw with the uh, Innkeeper's Talent, being able to copy the token before we sacrifice it and then have it persist. Opponent's got the Evangelist, also good to exile with a Sunfall. And our opponent explodes, yeah, Forge is gonna cross the finish line onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, we've got a Keeper. Just missing our Urbrask's Forge to go with Caretaker's Talent. But for now, some good interaction. Opponent on Teamer. Yeah, if they're on a the ramp deck, they can potentially go over the top of what we're doing. So this may be a bad matchup. A lookout will find an extra land. At least if they play a few of these creatures, it also helps set up Beza. Uh, so no need to Helix here. Did find the Forge, excellent. And then probably get to Forge going first. Attack to send a message. And then uh, next turn, if I play Beza, I'll get a treasure, most likely. If they play another creature, if I play it main phase, I'll get an extra token. But I could also play the Talon to start drawing extra cards. Yeah, Ancient Cornucopia can also help them ramp, and another Lookout. So, play Beza. And hit for two. Now Sunfall can also leave behind a larger token. But I'm still probably more interested in getting the cards flowing with Caretaker's Talent. Opponent likely has a couple sweepers of their own. Hopefully they don't have Brotherhood's Ends, but if they're playing Cornucopia, they probably don't. It's gonna be Hugs instead. Grizzly Guardian. Yeah, that provides a lot of value. So we see Volcanic Spites, Roxanne. So if I play Caretaker's Talent, what happens? That's probably okay. And then next turn I can Sunfall. And then let's make sure we tap properly. Because I can maybe still Lightning Helix Hugs. Which isn't strictly necessary, since next turn I'm likely to Sunfall. But let's say they have a counter spell, things might get a little bit messy. And still good to keep our life total high. Gonna wait to copy a token with talent until we build up our forge a bit more. And Roxanne going after Beza, they can tag it with a Volcanic Spite as well. That's acceptable. And now a Mentor. So the question is, do I attack with a token from Forge or do I just Sunfall first? I think I'll take it here. Yeah, I guess we'll Sunfall, and then our opponent doesn't get to block to soak up damage. Although, how likely are they to really block a 4-1 here? They probably are not going to. So, can attack, draw a card. And that might be a good time to Sunfall. And then I'm not going to copy the token here with Caretaker's Talent, since it would just be a 0-0 without counters on it. Could copy the treasure, but I'll just keep up my two-mana interaction. And then next turn maybe copy the Forge token in my second main phase. 
Another trash tactician. Survives Lightning Helix. Could hit it with Get Lost. And another Roxane. That one at least we can Helix. So opponent about to gain life and trigger the ability. Yeah, I guess it's too late for that now. Didn't really have an opportunity to respond before they get to trigger it. Finds Entrancer. Maybe I'll just end up using another Sunfall here. Opponent can play the Entrancer. They can target their own creature to draw. So if I get lost in response, I deny two extra cards, which seems worth it. Alright, take our turn. And then... Yeah, we have options. I could Sunfall animate the Incubator and attack. That seems reasonable to me. Even though I'll be out of answers for more large creatures if they show up. But it puts the opponent under quite a bit of pressure. And then next turn I can maybe level up talent all the way. To pump my tokens even more. There's the ill-timed explosion. Can they discard an expensive enough card to deal with a 7-7? Nope, just uh, four mana, gain two life, draw two cards. And another Entrancer. Decent answer to my token for now. And another one can maybe draw by targeting the other Entrancer. Or itself. Opponent can go exploring. So yeah, game's far from over. And Doppelgang, I see. So that's the grand finale here. Yeah, I don't know if we can stop with Doppelgang. If I had a shuffle effect here, I could maybe try and interfere somehow. So is there a way I can actually deal 14 damage this turn? I highly doubt it. If I can get them low enough and burn them out with Helix, that might still get there. But they can also gain life of Cornucopia. Yeah, the problem is I can't copy a token from Forge until my second main phase, so I won't be able to attack with it. So let's say I play another Forge, then I get a 6 power token, and I can only level up to level 2. If I level up twice, I'm attacking with an 8 power token. Yeah, maybe that's still the way to go. So this is not going to accomplish anything, sadly, but it does draw me a card. A lockdown, does that do anything? Not really. So level up again. And animate the incubator. I guess it would still only be a 4-4, but it does push a little bit more damage through, which is maybe fine. Try and get them low to finish them off with Double Helix. Yeah, it would have been better if we could reverse the levels on Caretaker's Talent. So I could have been left with a large token. But yeah, we'll see. This Doppelgang is looking pretty threatening. They can make a bunch of Urbrask's Forges. A couple Cornucopias. I'm hoping they uh, don't gain too much life. But yeah, Pwn's got four Cornucopias now. And uh, they get to draw a ton of cards with the Entrancer. So I think uh, the game's over here. I guess the Meteorite Token's also dealing two damage each time. So yeah, Doppelgang was the perfect finisher to find here. Since we just needed that one extra turn, I think, to close out the game. But so it goes. We're at 5, but our opponent can draw a million cards. 23 cards remaining, and the meteorites are untapped, so those can still cast more spells, gain more life with Cornucopia. So yeah, there's no turning back. 
We can use Lockdown to get rid of the Meteorites, but I don't think that's going to save me. These still have mana value 4, so those I cannot lock down. So our opponent's back up to 16 all of a sudden. And they've got ample blockers. So yeah, ended up being kind of close. Just needed to dodge that finisher. Not sure how many doppelgangs this deck is playing. Might be just two or three. We're at one. And Roxanne can do the honors. Alright, GG's. Sweet deck, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with what looks like a keepable hand. I will need to dig for extra lands with the Surveil. And I'll keep a Citadel. So I can play that tapped on two while keeping up Smite. And then set up turn three Forge. Hopefully turn four Beza. Opponent on a mouse deck. Cheeky house mouses first. And a challenger we're gonna smite. Take two. And we found a land, that's excellent. Get forge going, and then next turn we should be able to both make tokens and gain life with Bezal's ability. Another challenger rumbles in. And they've got a Might of the Meek. At least the Exalt card from Valiant is gonna go to waste, but we'll take six. And then we want to play Beza before we trigger Urbrax's Forge. And we get all modes here, gain four, make two tokens, and draw a card. So we're living the dream. And we've got another one coming up. A Raging Battle Mouse helps the opponent go wide. Which kind of plays into our Sunfall plan. Opponent hangs back and get lost to draw. So we have a couple options. Could just hang back and activate Mirax while keeping up Get Lost and Smite. Could attack and set up a Sunfall second main, which I'm also not opposed to. So that's a reason to maybe attack with Beza. Yeah, that maybe applies the most immediate pressure since they'll have to deal with a huge token that's left over. And our opponent will need to rebuild. And then next turn we can attack with a 7-powered Incubator, as well as a 4-powered Token from Forge. Opponent gets back on the board with a Hardfire Hero, can give it haste. Another creature that's good to exile with a cards like Elspeth Smite, so we don't trigger the death ability. And a Might of the Meek, alright, so they're getting in for 4. But uh, that would leave them dead on board. Unless they've got an extra blocker here. Monstrous Rage, so they're getting in for 7, but... Yeah, they're just dead on board if we activate Incubator and send in the token. But they probably didn't have many better options. Plus I could have played another Beza here to gain 4. So I can always decide to take a damage of Battlefield Forge to lower my own life total first. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand is a little clunky. Although it's okay against aggro with double smite, kind of just need to find another colored source that's not Mirex. And then we might be okay. I'll try it. Facing red-green. And a recruit, so it is aggro. Recruit kind of punishes me for targeting creatures. We did find a forge in the meantime, so I don't think I keep helix. We have enough spot removal, might prefer to find a sweeper. And then we also want a Forge to eventually combine with a Talent. Challenger's next. Alright, there's the Lockdown, so maybe I can just wait to Lockdown next turn. 
and for now take the hit. If they present a 3-drop, we can maybe helix it. Tumblebang, I see. So, if I target the Tumblewag, what happens? The Recruit triggers, but they won't be able to put a plus one counter on the Tumblewag itself. So I do want to helix it now. Before they get an extra counter. And then Lockdown can clean up the rest. We've got Talent for card draw and Mirex to enable it. And hopefully Smites to keep us alive. Although if they present another larger creature, we may not be able to answer it. Talent is one way to generate large creatures. So for now, play Talent and a Tap Land. Hope to draw Orbrask's Forge or maybe one of my Planeswalkers. Opponent's gonna start leveling up. Alright, so if they have some Planeswalkers they can play, they could maybe ultimate right away. Did get lucky to find Orbrask's Forge in the meantime. So can play that. And then maybe not play the land in case I draw a uh, tap land here with the Caretaker's Talent. Found an Elspeth instead. Yeah, you know what? I think I just level up the talent now. And make a 1-1. One -one. Could maybe help me chum block in the future. And the white mana from Mirex would have gone to waste. But it's got a manifold mouse, double strike with Innkeeper's talent is quite scary. So currently don't have the best answer to that. Maybe double smite, although they both cost two mana because of level two. So for now, can uh, go to attackers, draw with talents, could pump up my own tokens as well, or I can play another talent first, which is maybe for the best. So I get to draw two cards. Sunfall could be an answer and get lost deals with the talent, so that's a good solution. For now, I guess I may as well attack with this one, since it's going to go away. And then I could get lost the talents and then smite to finish off the Manifold Mouse. That works. And then I'll go full control to let damage happen first. And then use Smite in the end of combat step in case they had removal for my token. So this is still considered a blocker. Our opponent had a snakeskin veil to protect, sadly. But now if they go for double strike, I can just jump. So that's where making that token earlier could help. They could also go double strike and trample, so then I might just die to another pump spell. And they can also grow their creature by exploring. Opponent's gonna diversify. So as long as they don't kill me on the spot, we can sunfall and we should be able to survive. Hunter's talent kills my creature. So if they go double strike, double strike, that's exactly 12, so we die. Alright, GG's. Close one here. That snakeskin veil was pretty important. Double strike, double strike, and attack. And they get an extra plus one plus zero as well. GG's, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a decent hand. We've got early removal for aggro, and then forge to start applying pressure. Might is kind of the ideal answer to an early hardfire hero or scamp. 
Manifold Mouse to give a double strike. Alright, so we'll need to smite. And then I'm not sure yet if I get lost to Manifold Mouse or if we wait. For now we can wait and see. Ember Heart Challenger would get Double Strike and trigger Valiant. So I think the uh, Manifold is scarier than the Challenger. Although now they can potentially go exploring as well. So my hand still needs a little bit of help. Additional lands, an additional spot removal spell. At least they exile the Bane Splitter that they cannot cast. Alright, so I'm not in a hurry to play Orbrask's Forge, even though it would be nice to get it going. So instead I'll prioritize deploying Beza. And then Sunfall plus Season of the Burrow are nice leftovers. Bowden finds a Might of the Meek and another Manifold on top, so that's a lot of damage if they just cast both of those. Bowden's got different plans. Still gonna go for Might. They were maybe scared of interaction. Can't blame them. So it gets in for 5. And lets us untap. So now Beza doesn't make tokens, still gains life and draws card, which is good enough for now. And hopefully sets up Sunfall and Season. Smite is probably not going to be quite good enough. So Manifold now with Offspring. Okay, so Double Strike and Trample incoming, plus an extra mana for a potential Pump Spell. I'm definitely blocking, and then hoping we pick up a land for Sunfall. We know about Shock, so that's enough to take out Beza here. And still take a bunch of Trample. Alright, untap land. Lockdown also works, and I can't keep up Smite. Maybe should have named white on Citadel since we don't really need double red. So hopefully this will not end up costing me. Hardfire hero. And no haste for now. And found land 5. So now we've got options. Urobrask's Forge keep up smite seems reasonable. I'll let them overextend into my sweepers. Season cannot return anything too useful. So, yeah, let's go with Forge. And then Fountain Port's pretty synergistic with the Forge as well, since we can potentially sacrifice the token after it attacked to draw a card. But that's only really relevant once we have more mana. No blocks. If our opponent goes for a pump spell, I'll smite. That works. Alright, so we got the two for one. Don't take any damage. And Beza can once again gain us more life, even making a treasure since our opponent's got more lands in play. Now our deck does take a while to actually close out the game, so we do give the opponent time to kind of assemble the perfect hand, which is especially a problem against the Kalos Cell Sword builds of Mono Red, that can plot a slick shot and then just fire off a bunch of pump spells in one turn, sacrifice a creature, and then especially if it's a uh, creature like Hardfire Hero, they can double the damage essentially and close out the game. Alright, so Beza's gonna play defense, I think, still. Can play another Forge and maybe activate Fountain Port to draw a card. 
using the Citadel means I only need to tap one land to activate it. But maybe next turn Beza can attack, we'll see. So sacrifice to draw. Opponent with Might of the Meek just to cycle it. So they're looking for creatures. Found a land for turn. And our opponent explodes, so their hand didn't really get there. Alright, so we get to see our red-white token control deck in action. I'm quite pleased with how the Orbrask's Forge interacted with our Caretaker's Talent, got to draw us a lot of cards, and then also sets up our temporary lockdown perfectly, as we're not overextending into it, while being a great answer to all the red aggro decks in the format. Same with Elspeth's Smite, got to exile a few creatures without triggering them, and Beza was also great at stabilizing us. May be able to play the deck without Archangel Elspeth and just max out on Beza, which may be the more impactful card to play on turn 4 against aggro, and then the mana base could maybe use a bit more tweaking, 4 copies of Sunken Citadel might be overkill, we may not need 6 of the token producing lands since the game usually doesn't last that long where we're making multiple tokens per turn and drawing 2 cards per turn with a caretaker's talent, although in theory in the grindier matchups that could be a useful ability to have. So for now I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!